Welcome everyone to this Linux desktop update. In the news there was a Hackfest GTK updates and you might be surprised that even I was surprised that apparently some major things were not actually uh, GPU accelerated here in terms of for example the text view uh, scrolling so that is in the news and I wanted to give some important sense to that so first apparently um, this has not seen some architectural updates here over the years a few years ago they added pixel cache to it improved the scrolling but uh, on high resolution displays it's still a lot of pixels to shovel around and yeah been there done that I've shown my own UI stuff the other day welcome everyone in the audience by the way so apparently according to this hackfest news GTK4 rendering model um, they apparently avoided GTK text view, so it was using the, the fallback Cairo renderer pass, even though they ported uh, other text rendering in GTK to the new Pango renderer, which produced rendering nodes. Rendering nodes most likely many small objects of all the parts there on the screen. And uh, this is uh, specifically to point out because rendering nodes means you have a huge vast amount of objects to manage and cache and I've been there done that experimented with that it's actually not easy because so the question is how exactly do they do this because if you're not careful and have uh, a rendering node for each text line or even each glyph you will easily have 10 if not hundreds thousands of small objects but anyway whatever um, so this result is this result is quite amazing that you might see here, although not as amazing. Let me see what we problem is with this amazing UI. I can't full screen it because then it will go full screen over all my displays, but I guess you get the idea. This sure looks amazing or relatively good. I'm mostly surprised that it took a decade for Linux to catch on here on that front because in my opinion, a little bit ridiculous that it is newsworthy in 2019. If you speak about my own UI stuff that I've done here in my own 20% then that is also not yet isolated scrolling but this is a multi thousand hundred hundreds of thousand developer project really surprised that anyway so they are getting there this is of course amazing um, if this eventually so this is of course still I think alpha or beta or something but I have some more important notes so one note that I'm really find irritating is after the unexpected success they looked further on small things and uh, they could make text editing in GTK, GTK feel more modern. And uh, better blinking cursors, and you might find me surprised here about this because this is really hilarious that apparently they, probably not very visible here, they now animate here the text cursor apparently, that this is smoothly fading in and out. And I have important notes to this, so this will totally ruin your battery life. I've also been there, done that. We had such a bug, or so to say, already in Atom. Cursor causes high CPU load, 20% on a dual processor here in 2014 that also went through the news before I had a YouTube channel. So the way Atom does Cursor causes high CPU load when in the, there we are in 2019 or even 2014, uh, blinking text Cursor causes 20% CPU load on a dual CPU or no soon. With this amazing in and out phasing, fading bling, uh, cursor, I also wonder um, with all my criticism on desktop Linux stuff, um, it is no wonder that we are not there if people care about the whole Firefox browser here is lagging as hell and then as amazing this blinking cursor may or may not be um, your mileage may vary also can we get this probably not larger I wonder do we have this mostly centered no this is then on the other screen but ah, this is maybe halfway decent anyway I hope you find this animated cursor amazing why does this kill battery life so I've been there done that and uh, let's see need to check also need to optimize my multi monitor setup here so I've been there done that and the battery life on this aging Retina MacBook Pro, this is from also the camera. So this is from five years or so ago, my aging thing. And of course, 
Mac OS historically has much more GPU acceleration um, and the battery life of this is nearly twice as long on Mac OS than it is in Linux which is hilarious and this is already accounting for that Apple, I made a couple of videos about this, Apple is hiding the iGPU so if you do not hack this like myself booting there with this secret iffy protocol stuff then you only get NVIDIA graphic which is certainly not amazing and so a bat original battery life of this 45 watt plus NVIDIA GPU so certainly power hungry stuff from long time ago uh, or officially maybe five hours oh now of course the battery is five years old so although I'm lucky with this battery maybe still four hours if you do light development stuff of course it's old piece of shit right but nonetheless Linux gets even if you, I run with Intel CPU and stuff it runs significantly hotter maybe Apple is undervolting it or using secret uh, CPU or sleep states or something but nonetheless it's a vast difference and this are the stuff like all the stuff is accelerated on the GPU I made another video already all the 2D vector canvas stuff not being accelerated but I also made a video here about this amazing ThinkPad more amazing ThinkPad stuff and um, here from 490S uh, goodness and this is the same on Linux here and I may test so when I run this on my uh, right now I actually run it on the USB drive so the reason the battery life on Linux is often not as amazing is exactly this small stuff like this the CPU not going into the deepest power saving states and why is this because for example we had one reason a couple of years ago also before I made the YouTube channel we had R A uh, AHCI the advanced host and uh, control interface for serial ATA uh, not putting the serial ATA links into the lowest power state and that prevented the whole CPU package from reaching the lowest CPU state. So something as simple as the serial ATA link kept the CPU package in a higher power state and the same for USB, the more USB you have in there. Um, this is also the reason when I run these machines for testing here for product reviews with my external USB drive the battery life is usually quite some percentage lower just by having a USB drive plugged in USB SSD for the root system and I wanted to really point this out because so many people on uh, news sites uh, shout out yeah this is amazing but do not forget the power draw of this maybe unnecessary animation and maybe it's not even the most user uh, user friendly because if coming from a usability design standpoint and user interface and usability design it might not be optimal if this is fading so much and you look over the screen with your eyes you might very often catch the cursor in a similar faded state and you might not even find a blinking cursor as easily as if this would be just on and off and the animation causes very many CPU wake up so if you want a smooth animation you need to wake up the CPU 30 times or so a second and uh, if you want a butter smooth animation certainly 60 frames per second obviously so this are 60 wake ups and this very likely on top of other wake ups for Wi-Fi packets and whatnot in any case contributes to this massive amount of wake ups and is very likely to keep your CPU in much higher CPU states than the CPU would go without the 60 wake ups per second and um, yeah so we had this we've been there we've done uh, that also need to check was there something else so I have one more point here for this presentation today let's navigate here from yeah so that is that also um, yeah for the last 20 years cursor blinking was very simple we turn it on and off again yeah uh, and guess what that consumes way less power than animating it with pixel shaders, shaders in your um, maybe rendering nodes if I'm so the thing is with this rendering nodes if the, I'm not sure so I've not um, studied this and the graver welcome in the audience so I've not reviewed the code but if this means that the cursor is a rendering node this might be that it is even more expensive than just animating this cursor fading it in and out with a transparent alpha value 
because then it might be a huge management overhead going through all the rendering nodes. Rendering nodes likely meaning that all this stuff here, this is a rendering node for all this kind of tabs and text elements and such. So if they have implemented this such generic, generically, it might consume quite some CPU cycles going through all the rendering nodes and finding out what needs to be redrawn instead of just in good old-fashioned times uh, blitting a one pixel line over the cursor here in, uh, in a field and X or most likely XORing it there. Um, of course, not 60 times lower CPU load but with all the rendering node and such definitely thousands magnitudes lower CPU load, but as the graver calls there, um, Commodore C64 wants his blinking text cursor back. Yeah, this is actually no kidding. This is exactly what I prepared here. There was a study a couple of years ago, 2017, and why modern computers struggle to match input latency of Apple IIe. And I experienced this myself, I and mean, not only that I'm frustrated with the not as amazing Firefox UI, experience here but here was a study um, so maybe this engineer then Lou maybe recently got curious about various devices compared in terms to input latency input latency meaning from when you move the mouse or press a keyboard button a key press from this protocol level from the mechanical contact to uh, a screen result changing the pixels on the screen and the Apple IIe here has surprisingly, surprisingly the lowest input latency also on an IBM XT80, uh, 8086. Uh, not sure, maybe they have not tested this, maybe we should test this. If you are on uh, DOS prompt and you get an interrupt, of course this interrupt immediately triggers very directly the screen drawing and screen characters in this text mode graphics without any kind of double buffering, it just writes the uh, text attributes there in the text memory at B8000 or whatever that was and I would not be surprised if an IBM XT has a similar input latency of around 30 milliseconds and as you see the faster the machines become the higher input latency we got here this is hilarious you see 1883 1881ti99-4 custom so here's a custom Haswell with apparently 164 a 65 hertz display a Commodore PET uh, 60 uh, milliseconds SGI Indy 60 custom Haswell 120 hertz ThinkPad Chroma 70 iMac G4 or even so even OS 9 uh, System 9 there from 2002 um, and yeah you see slower slower here apparently Linux and also so why is it this is because modern systems not only do they have more in between so the interrupt previously on DOS and such uh, triggered you have seen my GCC exam that's with an interrupt on a sound blast and stuff like that so we get an interrupt we directly write to the graphic memory and we have a result rather quickly and on modern systems so not only is this interrupt handled by the operating system the operating system is of course not doing the UI stuff in the kernel so it is signaled to the user space, some user space process eventually wakes up, um, gets this event, updates the UI logic and then draws with some windowing system like X11 or uh, Windows Server on uh, Mac OS or Windows, draws this, this is going through the graphic driver and then maybe even double buffering is involved so it's not even then through all these layers of back and forth of signaling and APIs and context switching not even drawing directly to the screen but to a double buffer for tier free flicker free graphics and this is eventually page flipped then with the next vertical retrace so adding all this latency on top of um, each other and this is why we get here uh, next cube, yeah, next cube, super slow. Maybe the next cube even had display postscript. Not sure, but maybe. Uh, maybe, but that is something for another video. But you see here, Lenovo X1 Carbon, fourth gen, so uh, similar to what we just had here. This amazing, similar goodness here. Not too many generations, just four year, four years older. Windows and Linux. So, uh, Windows in this test was even worse. Surprisingly, 150 milliseconds to. Um, 
110 maybe I wish they would have this here a little bit more in detail whether it was X11. I, I think X11 had, has most likely a lower le input latency than running a composition manager like the example one X comp manager or something like um, all the other fancy ones, Kaven and Gnome and um, whatever the other were. So yeah, also a packet around the world, 190 milliseconds. So this is most likely some ping time from Austria to America or Europe to America or China or something of that sort. So yeah, there you see how extremely un unexpectedly high the input latency is, as nearly around as long as um, a packet, uh, IP packet around the world. It's hilarious. And why are we getting there? Well, because we have UI developers who animate a blinking cursor, most likely with shaders or something uh, of that sort. So yeah, there you have it in 2019 when your open GL card is, or Vulkan or uh, that sort of animating your cursor, blinking uh, with pixel shaders or whatever, just modulating the alpha blending of some texture fun. And uh, yeah, why I'm actually motivated, why I'm tinkering around with these vintage cards. Um, of course, I said this before, latest NVIDIA and AMD cards or Intel cards are so complex, I'm certainly not writing a graphic driver, but this kind of fun is what I want to do going forward, researching this kind of stuff, writing some example graphic code, continue, continuing there with uh, the Voodoo Verge uh, rendition variety and making the experiments, doing this my own. By the way, fun fact, the only reason I actually got here this um, Retina MacBook Pro is because this is my second, um, even this is from 2013 or something of that sort. Aging, I will not buy a new Apple product because peak bugs, breaking stuff, uh, I sold that SSD, T2 security shop, but why is this the second? So I actually got the generation before this, whatever that was, and then I could not run, then 4K came out, I couldn't run a 4K display at 60 hertz. So it run only with 30 hertz. Maybe this was a limitation of the Intel CPU because if you would boot into Windows or Linux, you could actually, even with the previous generation of this one, um, run 60 hertz display 4K and uh, just not with macOS. Maybe this was because macOS was always using hybrid graphics and maybe this is why they didn't allow this because the Intel graphic could maybe not drive 60 hertz, maybe something like that. But the mouse cursor, the reason I could have endured this, I didn't really need 60 hertz that much for my source code text editing, but at, at 30 hertz, the mouse cursor was so lagging, it really felt extremely annoying to drag the mouse so slowly, it was like really lagging, you, mus you moved the mouse and you could like literally see the mouse cursor crawling there lagging on the screen behind it. It was really annoying. It was total rubber band feeling after I, I endured this like maybe six months, which probably most of you would have already thrown this away earlier. And only this is why I then upgraded to this one because just for 60 hertz. But there you see 30 hertz and most likely it was faster on Linux for some reason. So most likely this is double buffering because my old fashioned X window setup was not double buffering. So maybe the mouse cursor was only moving at 15 hertz on macOS because of double buffering, because the operating system gets the interrupt, updates the mouse cursor eventually, and then it takes for the next double buffering, maybe. At least it felt like twice as laggy on macOS than it did on Linux. Maybe this was double buffering, maybe not. In any case, super annoying, and I just wanted to shout this out here for this consideration. And if this really goes into production and you want better battery life in your next Fedora release or something, then maybe you want to disable this because certainly this keeps your CPU nicely awake and busy updating this animation. I hope you found this quick news update here about UI considerations and all this stuff interesting and learn something and hope to see you soon for the next videos to come.